All right, here goes topic 11, intro to limits. Doing it graphically and using a table. Well, we have to first figure out what does it really mean when they're asking you to find a limit. So in this particular expression, what you're asked is to see as the x values get closer to one, are the y values reaching or approaching a particular value? So as the x gets closer to 1, closer and closer to 1, do the y values of whatever this function is approach a particular value? Now, when I say approach a particular value, it possibly could reach a particular value too. It doesn't mean it has to just get closer and closer. It could uh, actually reach the particular value as well. So when x gets closer and closer to 1, do the y values of this thing, of if I drew, drew that function, would the y values be getting closer and closer or approach a particular value? value. That's what it's that's what it's asking. And so the first thing we're going to look at is a table. And when we look at the table, you really can't determine the limit from a table, but you can certainly make an educated guess at what you think the limit is going to be. Because when they ask you for a limit, what I'm asking you is of course does the limit from the left equal the limit from the right? And that's what I want you to get from today. For the limit to be, uh, for the overall limit, I'm going to skip down here as you're approaching a value. If the limit is x approaches c of f of x equals l, what must be true? What do you have to know? That means that the left-hand limit, or the limit from the left, must equal the right-hand limit. It's hard to write small with this stylus. So does the left-hand limit equal the right-hand limit? We'll talk about the mathematical notation in a second, but we're just going to go there. So looking at this table, what does the left-hand limit even mean? That means as I approach one from the left, Left means from values to the left or less than 1. So notice what's happening on this chart. Obviously, here is an x value of 1. When I'm going this way, I am approaching 1 from the left, meaning I am finding a left-hand limit. Now look at the y values. Does it look like these y values are approaching or possibly reaching a particular thing. You go, yeah, it looks like the y's are getting closer and closer to three. Well, let's go the other way. The other way, I'm going to approach the right-hand limit. I'm going to approach one by coming into one from numbers greater than, and I'm getting closer and closer to one from the right. So I'm approaching one from the right side. Does it look like these y values are getting closer and closer to a particular value? Yeah, it looks like when you're going this way, they're coming into 3 as well. So I could make it from the table. It appears that the limit from the left is 3, and it appears that the limit from the right is 3. So by the tabular method, we can predict that the overall limit as x approaches 1 of that function is equal to 3 because the left-hand limit equaled the right-hand limit. Okay? For the notation, what does that mean? Remember, when you just see a 1, that means you're doing the overall limit. But the left-hand limit, what it looks like, it has the limit word and you approach C, but it has a superscript of a minus there of f of x. And you could probably guess what the right-hand limit, if I wanted to denote that mathematically. I would approach the constant with a 
plus, a, a superscript of a plus, which means you are approaching from the right. Because as we get into uh, the back page, we're going to be finding limits, so you have to know what that means. So you're approaching from the left or from the right. With the overall limit, you have to do the left and right in your head and see if they are equal. So look at that next table and you tell me if you think that limit exists. And if so, what's the number? And if not, you put does not exist. So again, pause the video, see what you think. And so here's what I would do. I would mark where zero is. Well, zero is, I'm approaching, zero is about there. Now, they don't have zero marked on the table, but I'm certainly approaching zero. I'm getting closer and closer to zero from the left, left less than, so that would be in the, in the negatives there. And so it looks like these Y values, eh, it looks like, I'll just say they're getting close to 1.1. I mean, I'm getting closer to that, so I'm headed towards from the left. It looks like my left limit is 1.1. When I approach zero from the right, so I'm coming in this way, getting closer and closer, I'm getting a negative 1.1. Well, is the limit from the left equal to the limit from the right? Because that's what this is saying. When you're finding the overall limit, that's what you have to consider. And I'm getting two different numbers, and that's when I write does not exist. The limit does not exist exist. If the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit, then the limit does not exist. Now graphically, here's what we're going to do. Just like you did it on the table, and I wish you could, you know, visually see what I'm doing or I could draw two lines at once. What you have to realize with graphically is you're just going to kind of do your fingers at, at the kind of same time. So if this is asking for the limit as x approaches one, I'm going to come in from the left and I'm going to come in from the right, but I'd actually do them at the same time and see if my fingers are going toward the same point, same Y value. And so are they? Yes. Does that open circle matter though? That kind of messes me up a little bit if those are, if that is open. Well, for limits, the left, the fact that it is an open circle does not matter. Okay, so this limit is the left limit and the right limit. Are they approaching the same y value? Are they getting closer and closer and closer to the same y value? Yes, and that y value is 2. So the limit is equal to 2. Now when I ask f of 1, what does that mean when f, you know, f of 1, what does that mean? That means when x equals 1, what is y equal? That's what that question's asking. Or in other words, where is the close dot at x equals 1? Well, that matters, the open and closed. And I don't even have a closed dot at 1. I'll erase that so you can see the picture a little bit better. Um, I don't even have a closed dot at 1. So that f of 1 doesn't exist. So you need to understand just because you have a limit doesn't mean that it equals the function value. Now let's look at letter B. Letter B again, you're approaching one. So what should you think? They're asking me for the overall limit. So I'm going to approach one from the left. So my pin is along f of x and that's something I do want you to write down. Your finger or pin, whichever one, always needs to be on f of x. When I say approach 1, don't do this. Don't come in and approach it on the number line. Your finger or your pin is always on f of x. So my limit from the left would be 3. My limit from the right, I'm approaching 1. I'm getting closer and closer to an x value of 1. Well, that's clearly going to a different spot. And if I could, again, show you, visualize my fingers going along those things at the same time, would my fingers be pointing to the same y value? No. This one would be pointing to 3. This one would be pointing to negative 1. And so that limit does not exist. 
What is f of 1? Well, f of 1, I'm going to look for the closed dot at 1. And that does exist. I do have a closed dot at 1, and it's at negative 1. So we've learned that the limit and the function value don't necessarily have to be the same thing. Can they? Well, of course. Of course. If I ask this one the limit as x approaches 0, you would tell me 2. And the function value would also be 2. So you can, the, it can be the same, but it doesn't have to. So we're going to explore more graphically and actually do some from the left and the right and see how we do. I really, and not to sound mean, but I really hate it when people miss these limits graphically because I'm like, it's right in front of you. Like your eyes tell you the answer or they should tell you the answer. So all you have to make sure you know how to do is look at the right spot. So let's go through this first one together. Now usually a test questions are not going to ask you to, to do from the right, from the left, overall, function. I mean, but in the notes here we're kind of exploring and we want to see different things. So what does this one ask you? You're approaching 4 from the right. Now obviously, a x value of 4 is right here, but remember my pin is always on f of x, so if I'm coming in from the right, I'm coming in like this, where am I headed? What y value am I headed to? And hopefully you all say negative 1. Does the open circle matter? Not when you're talking about limits. No, it does not. Now what about the limit from the left? Well, the limit from the left, as I approach 4 from the left, I'm coming in on f of x. What y value am I headed towards? I'm headed towards 1, so that limit would be equal to 1. Since I've already done those, you can write this answer very quickly. Because remember, the overall limit is asking, does the limit from the left equal the limit from the right? So because I've already done those two things and see that they are not equal, I could put does not exist. If the question went straight to this and I haven't done the limit from the left and right, then you're doing what you just did to get those individual ones and you would see that they were not the same. What is f of 4? And we all say 1. Perfect. Now stop the video and you try maybe the next line. See if you can do all of those and then come back and see if you get all the right answers. Negative 2 is over here. As I approach 2 from the right, that means I'm doing this. What y value am I headed to? That's 3. As I approach negative 2 from the left, I'm doing this, that's also approaching 3. So the overall limit is going to be 3. However, when I say where is the closed dot at negative 2, well, my closed dot is not at 3. My closed dot is way down there at negative 1. So it is okay I, just because I have a limit. Again, the limit and the function value are not the same. So it really didn't matter where that closed dot was for the limit part. It's going to be 3 no matter what. But the y value, of course, makes a very big deal. All right. Let's try 5a. I mean, erase. I've got so many uh, colors here. Let's, let's get a clean piece. All right, next one. What do we got? We're approaching 2 from the right. So 2 from the right is I'm following along f of x and I'm doing this. Now, you go, okay, and here's what we have to talk about. Because there is debate in the calculus world as to what answer you should put. And here's what I want you to put. If I ask you where is that going, you would say, well, it's, it's increasing without bound. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I want you to put positive infinity. 
Now there are some people that go, well, you shouldn't put infinities for limits because infinity by definition is limitless. So you should put does not exist there because the limit doesn't exist because it's going up forever. But here's, here's the thing and that I need to explain to you. If you have a multiple choice test, you will never see does not exist and infinity as two separate answer choices. You'll never see that. So if this was a multiple choice test and the answer choices were does not exist and all numbers, you know, two, negative one, zero, five, then by all means you would put does not exist. However, the reason why I'm wanting you to put infinity or negative infinity is because what if the answer choices had infinity as an answer choice and negative infinity as an answer choice? If you just were in the habit of putting does not exist on everything, then you haven't practiced distinguishing between those two things. Plus, if I'm looking and I read the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x does not exist, there are so many things. I can't really picture the graph because I, it could be a jump or it could be, I mean, there's so many different things. If you tell me the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is infinity, I can totally visualize what that graph is doing. So to me, it's a more specific answer. So I do want you to put infinity or negative infinity. As I approach two from the left, that's here. Where is he going? Well, that's negative infinity. Now the overall limit, well, does the limit from the right and the limit from the left, do they equal the same thing? I got positive infinity for one and negative infinity for the other. That's two different things. So I put does not exist. Is there a closed dot at two? No. So that does not exist as well. Now I want to be very clear, okay, because I could have done this. I know last year um, when you did rational functions, you know, your teacher, because I say it in rational functions, when you have a rational function, you will never cross a vertical asymptote. You will never do that. But I could define, I could have slapped a dot right here just because I felt like it. If it's a piecewise function, I could define it to be that way. So just because you have an asymptote, this possibly could have a value if I chose to put a closed dot on the asymptote. That is definitely a possibility and is legal, okay, with a piecewise function. So I just want to say on this one, I didn't have one, but I certainly could have if I wanted to. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to work on that last line. There's some uh, overall limits, so you have to think about what to do for that. And there's some just from the left or the right, so you have to know uh, what to do about that. So try those last, that last line, and then come back and see if you get them right. So let me erase, and then I'll, I'll go. All right, what does that first one say? The limit as x approaches 0. So it's an overall limit. So I say to myself, does the limit from the left equal the limit from the right? Am I going to the same y value? Yep, it is. I am. And that y value is 4. The limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left. Be careful as well, as, as silly as this sounds, a lot of times this font is very small, and sometimes the arrow and the negative kind of your eye just kind of, uh, I mean, people get their test back and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even see that negative. I did four from the left. So look real carefully at the number. I'm approaching negative four from the left. Here's negative four. So from the left is less than. So I'm approaching negative four from the left and I am headed towards this y value. Again, open circle doesn't matter. And what is that, four, five, six, seven? So my limit would be seven. And then finally, what about the limit as x approaches one? Where are you looking on that one? Well, here's an x value of one. So I'm approaching from the left. I've got to approach from the right, so I'm kind of going this way and this way. My fingers are pointing to the same 
y value, that open circle does not matter, and it is 1. So even though the limit exists, the function does not because there's no closed dot. And then finally, negative 6. The limit as x approaches negative 6, well, negative 6 is way out here. And when I am approaching negative 6 from the left, I am up here, limit from the left and right are the same, that's also 7. So hopefully that helped you and you were able to get those correct. Now what does this question say? Here's what I want you to think about. Notice that sometimes we got the limit and the function value. Well, gosh, I'm not sure in any of our examples that, that we actually do that, but uh, that the limit and the function value is actually the same. Because, again, notice here we got a limit value, we got, we got a function value to be different. Um, so I'm asking you to consider what would be true if the limit equals the function value. Where I Think about where that's true for. So look at that graph and see if you have a little, little guess at that. And hopefully somebody will come up with, or you will, you will have thought of, okay, that would be true. I mean, all along here, the limit, the function values are the same, 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 all along here. So where is it not true? Here here. I mean, I have a limit, but it doesn't equal the function value. So hopefully you came up with, it's going to be where f of x, if this statement is true, then f of x is continuous. That's an O. Continuous at x equals c. If the limit equals the function value, then you know that you're at a continuous point of, uh, of the graph, okay? And remember, continuity, like holes, jumps, uh, asymptotes, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's what you're going to be doing on your homework tonight. You're going to be looking at a table, you're going to be looking at graphs, and be finding limits. Good luck!